When researchers talk about memory, they break it into three basic categories. There's working memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Of course, our ultimate goal is to get things into long-term memory in order to learn something. But let's take a look at what working memory is. Whenever you're doing something, you're keeping information about what you're trying to do in your working memory. It's kind of like a scratch pad. Or if you prefer a computer analogy, it's like the RAM on your computer. Your working memory is very limited. It can only hold a little bit of information. The typical number provided is seven plus or minus two bits of information that can be stored in your working memory. This is why we can each basically remember a phone number if we try hard enough, because it's about seven digits. However, there is a way to improve your working memory. This is a process called chunking. The key insight here is that those seven bits of information can actually be larger or smaller. For example, if I say A, X, B, those are three random letters, and you need to remember them as three distinct random letters. But if instead I say something like CIA or FBI, you actually remember that as a single chunk, a single piece of information. CIA is a thing. It's an object in your mind. It's not three separate letters. This is how chunking works. One way that people can use chunking is to, say, break a phone number into segments that you know. So if somebody has an area code that you're familiar with, then perhaps you're able to store that as a single chunk instead of three discrete digits. Likewise, if you're trying to remember something, breaking it into chunks and assembling those chunks together is more effective than trying to remember all of the discrete little pieces. This is another place where metacognition starts to play a role. By attempting to understand the subject and see how it fits into your brain, then you can essentially see how the pieces fit together. For example, if I'm studying a foreign language, it's important not to just memorize a conjugation table, but try to understand what type of verb this particular word is and see if it's irregular or regular or understand the different properties of that word. As I start to put these pieces together, it will make the language overall make more sense. Now, as an aside, this is why students might get frustrated with these concepts at the beginning. In foreign languages, for example, it seems like almost extraneous information to be learning all of these extra details about the word, the regular versus irregular, and so on. But later on, as the pieces start to come together, they support each other. So what was extra work at the beginning becomes a benefit later on. And this is a common theme in learning, is that when you do more work at the outset, you actually help yourself later. So if you want to improve your memory and you want to improve memorization, it's about learning these pieces, about figuring out how they fit together. There's other strategies and tricks as well. One is a memory palace. I linked to some resources to help you use memory palaces on the blog, but the basic idea is that the human brain remembers imagery better than it does other forms of information. So you can take advantage of this fact to actually create a visual scene that helps you recall things better. Some of the other tricks that we're going to cover are note-taking, flashcards, and so on in the upcoming lectures.